Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss about atomic boolean type. Now you saw how limited atomic flag in the previous video. Atomic bool on the other hand is more fully featured boolean than the atomic flag. Now let me point it out to important aspect of any atomic type. All atomic types neither copy constructible nor copy assignable. And we can assign and construct atomic type variables with corresponding non-atomic types. So in the atomic boolean case also, it's neither copy assignable nor copy constructible. But we can assign non-atomic booleans to the atomic bools. And also we can construct atomic bool using non-atomic booleans. Now let's see each of these fact in action using example. Now in this example, first I construct the atomic boolean called flag 1. Now, not like in the atomic flag, we haven't specified any initialization here. But flag 1 will be assigned false as its value by default. And then I am trying to create another atomic boolean variable called flag 2 using flag 1 to the constructor. Now here, as you can see, compiler gave me an error mentioning that the copy constructor is a deleted function for the atomic boolean specialization. And also then I am trying to assign one atomic boolean a another atomic boolean. Now in this case also, compiler gave me an error mentioning that the copy assignable is a deleted function for the atomic boolean specialization. On the other hand, in the next step, I am trying to construct atomic boolean using non-atomic bool value. And then I am trying to assign non-atomic bool to the atomic boolean. In each of these cases, compiler haven't specified any error. Now let me comment each of these error statement and run this example. Okay, as you can see here, flag 1 has been initialized with the value false. And also flag 4 and flag 5 has been initialized properly with the true value because the non-atomic boolean we have used to construct and assign for the flag 4 and flag 5 is assigned to true value. This output is verifying the points I made in my slides. Now let's discuss about functions offered by the atomic boolean. So here I have listed down some functions we can use with atomic booleans. In fact, other than the atomic flag, these six functions can be used on any atomic types we are going to discuss throughout this tutorial. So keep in mind, even though I am going to discuss each of these functions related to the atomic bool, this discussion can be applied to any atomic type other than atomic flag. So in this video, we are going to discuss about first four operation, is log free, store, load and exchange. Now the last two function, compare exchange weak and compare exchange strong, are very important in the atomic world. So I will discuss about these functions in detail when we are talking about the atomic integers in the next video. So let's get on with the first four function. So in this example, I have first construct atomic boolean variable called x using non-atomic value false. And then I have called isLockFree function on that x variable. Now, most of the common C++ implementation provide the lock-free implementation of basic types. But if you use user-defined type with the atomic template, most definitely compiler will use internal locks to provide the atomicity of operation. And then I have construct another atomic variable called y using non-atomic value true. The store and the load operation provide the functionality same as their name implies. Now one thing to notice here is that we can use atomic types and the non-atomic type also with the store operation. So here I have used store operation to store false to the x variable and then I have used store operation to store the value of y atomic variable to the x atomic variable. And of course in the next statement I have load the value of y atomic variable using load function. And then I am doing the exchange operation. This exchange function will change the value of atomic variable to the provided value and return the previous value. So here in this exchange statement, I have received the previous value to the 
variable called z. And then I am going to print it out both current value and the previous value for the atomic boolean x. So let me run this example and see what is the outcome. So here as you can see from this output, atomic boolean is implemented in the log free manner. And of course the value of atomic boolean y has been loaded properly, that's why it's printed out as a 1. And the current and the previous value for the x after this exchange operation has also printed out properly. So that's it for this video. We will discuss about compare exchange weak and the compare exchange strong function when we are discussing about atomic integers in the next video.